when truck drivers are on the highways that they're protected, the cargo gets where it's going to get to, and it's happened safely so that everyone on the road is protected. If you're injured in a crash with a big rig, is it always the truck driver's fault? Well, that's what we hope to find out right now, because that's what we're going to ask the lawyer. Hi again, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com, and my guest is attorney Chris Gilreath from Tennessee, who uh, is going to help us uh, sort all of this out. I want to remind you before we talk to Chris, if you want to ask questions about your specific situation, you can just head over to AskTheLawyers.com, click the button at the top of the page that says Ask a Lawyer, and it'll take you right through the process there. Chris, good to see you. Thank you for helping us out and answering our questions. Absolutely, Rob. Great to see you today. So these days, uh, probably more than ever, but uh, truck drivers have always been essential workers uh, in, in our country, and, and they do uh, a very essential kind of work. But uh, when there are accidents, when there are collisions, with injuries, uh, is it always the truck driver's fault uh, if there's a, an accident? What, what's your experience there? No, it's really, sometimes it's not the truck driver's fault. Uh, you know, crashes come in a lot of shapes and sizes. I mean, if you think about it, our interstate system is really kind of a commercial delivery system. We use it every day for taking our kids places, for getting to and from work, uh, going across town, going to visit family. But, um, you know, it's also how groceries get delivered. It's how building materials get delivered. And so it's really kind of an essential thoroughfare for really everyone. So tell me about regulation of the trucking industry. Who or, or what regulates them? How regulated is it? And, and, and why does that matter? Well, you know, as a general matter, the, the baseline set of rules is set up by the federal government. There is a set of minimum standards uh, that are called uh, federal safety motor carrier standards. And they are basically set a minimum level of rulemaking rule for how truck, trucking companies and truck drivers are supposed to operate on highways. Um, the, the law also makes room for individual states to add on their own additional requirements as long as they meet those minimum standards. And so it's a combination of state and federal regulation. Lots of regulations, though, and, and I'm guessing uh, uh, it's hard to, to sort through all that sometimes. It can be. It's, you know, the idea is it's designed to make sure that the trucks themselves are safely maintained that truck drivers are trained. Uh, those, those vehicles are large and they carry a lot of weight. And so they wanna make sure that, that when, the, when truck drivers are on the highways that they're protected, the cargo gets where it's gonna get to and it's happened safely so that everyone on the road is protected. Do those rules also cover uh, time behind the wheel and, and miles it can cover and, and, and how much uh, rest drivers have to take and, and why is that important? Yes, uh, over a period of years, the rules have changed uh, a little bit, but there are basically uh, two or three rules that, that uh, commercial trucking companies and drivers have to follow. One is there's what they call the 14 hour rule, which basically says that a driver can only drive a maximum of 14 hours in any one day, which is measured as a 24 hour period. And then uh, as you can imagine, there's also a weekly maximum of 60 hours of driving a week if you're working on a seven-day calendar period. And there's also what they call the 70-hour rule, which means that if for some reason your company operates on an eight-day calendar, you can only drive up to 70 hours of active driving in an eight-day period. And then there's also rules for taking breaks each day for at least a 30-minute period within every eight hours. And those are important because you can imagine that driving a big vehicle over a period of time, you get tired. And so it's important that drivers are alert on the highway. In your experience, do you, uh, have you found that sometimes uh, trucking companies push the drivers to get right up to those limits or maybe even exceed those limits? Oh, absolutely. It does happen. You can imagine if you're running a trucking company, the one thing you want to do is make sure that your goods get from point A to point B as efficiently as possible. And if you're in particular industry, sometimes that's a 24 hour cycle where you want trucks rolling in the middle of the night during, during the busiest of days. And so how do you schedule all that to make sure that drivers are going all the different places you have business to deliver goods? And that takes a lot of coordination. And so those rules become extra important 
for when drivers can drive. And, and how do they track those hours and, and uh, limits? You know, well, the, the original uh, setup is drivers are required to keep logs of their, of their activity. The times that they're driving, times that they're on break, times that they're sleeping. And it started out as being a paper log. A lot of those are now done electronically through little devices that are actually in the cabs of the trucks. And then a lot of trucking companies will have these kind of computer generated systems where all that information for all their drivers are, is collected and they use computer programs and software to help track and organize the coordination of the drivers. And, and if there's a collision, if there's injuries, um, is, that, is that information uh, helpful as far as evidence for uh, someone like yourself? And does uh, sometimes that evidence not get, not get taken care of? Right, what you can imagine is the real world, you know, happens, you know, not in, in, nothing's perfect. So not, if you're involved in a serious collision, maybe the, the equipment in the truck is damaged and the information from that driver is lost. Um, or sometimes drivers will not always keep up their logs as they're supposed to each day, life gets complicated. And maybe you decide, a driver decides that he or she is going to keep up that log later. And then they, something happens, a family member calls, and then they've just forgotten to do it. Um, and those things happen. And so it's, it's definitely important because anytime you're dealing with a collision, especially a collision where serious injuries are involved, there's always a, there are always contributing factors to that. And it doesn't necessarily mean anybody intended to do something wrong, but there's also a re there's always a reason that that happened. And so the evidence of the driver's activity, how long they had been driving, how tired they were, how many days they've been driving, all factors into that fatigue level and whether there's any inattention of the driver's. I would imagine that evidence being so important and making sure that, that nothing happens to it. That's where someone like yourself comes in. Tell me how an attorney like yourself, uh, if I'm the injured party, how you help make sure that doesn't disappear. So normally, the, once we get word that a situation has happened, we will typically send out uh, a letter to the trucking company. Uh, we'll get the crash report from our client or from a, um, a first responding agency. And we will reach out to the company and say, we understand there's been an incident. We're asking that you preserve an entire laundry list of information. Uh, a lot of companies have a lot of different physical and, and computer generated systems that hold information. Vehicles themselves have computers on them that hold information about what the vehicle itself had been doing. And we reach out and we try to ask that that information be preserved as soon as possible. I, I would imagine yeah, getting that uh, letter out, getting that uh, uh, evidence preserved as early as possible is, is, is really important, is it not? It is, you know, under the federal, under the, tr the rules for trucking companies, companies are only required to keep that information for six months and then they're allowed to legally get rid of it. Now, whether they keep it is up to them, but a lot of companies, either because it's paper storage or just because they just don't want to store that much backlog of information, they just, it's, it's like an old utility bill. They, they, you know, they shred it, they get rid of it. And a lot of times in a legal case where there's some serious injuries, that, that situation lasts a lot longer than six months. And so to keep the trucking company from getting rid of evidence that's important to a case in your situation, that's why we send the letter out to put them on notice. There's a potential claim here. Legally, we're asking you to hold that information and preserve it because we want the best evidence of the, of the facts to be available to present in court. Lots of great information, Chris. Thank you so much for answering our questions. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. And that's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been Tennessee attorney Chris Gilreath. Remember, if you want to ask questions about your specific situation, head over to askalawyers.com and click the button at the top of the page that says Ask a Lawyer, and you can do that right there. Thanks for watching. I'm Rob Rosenthal with Ask the Lawyers.